my name is John Crandall. I work as the monitoring coordinator for the Methow Restoration Council. Today we're going to head out to the upper Methow River to look at habitat complexity and snorkel our way down through what we call the Big Valley Reach. Layers are a key factor of trying to stay warm. I mean, the water temperature today is gonna be, oh, hovering right around 40 degrees. There's really not much left of these guys, but they've been a good companion. Springtime in April into May, when the Chinook, the young Chinook are gonna hatch from their eggs and turn into small fry. And so these were eggs that were deposited by the adult Chinook last kind of late summer, uh, August into September. And the eggs sit in the gravel, in the, the gravel nest called a red. And they'll sit in that red all winter long, uh, developing slowly. And this time of year, the eggs hatch. The young fish called elvins swim up from the red and off they go. They begin their journey, uh, which will eventually lead them out to the Pacific Ocean. And I think we have a, an opportunity to see some of these young Chinook, possibly coho salmon as well today. Uh, all the fish that we see will count by life stage and species, so that's one of the more important data collection tasks we have when we're snorkeling is counting how many fish we see. Some high-tech lens cleaner. All right, here we go. Very important for the surveyor to be experienced in identifying the fish. A lot of the smaller fish, they're only a couple inches long. They look fairly similar and there's a few distinct identification markings that each species has and so we need to really quickly make decisions on uh, what we're seeing because we're moving pretty quickly downriver. But one of the things that we're looking at today is what we're talking about is, is habitat complexity and one uh, major component of habitat complexity in the Methow River is large wood, kind of like what we're looking at here. So we're seeing this looks like a cottonwood that's fallen in the river from some location, potentially floated down here or fell off the bank. Um, and we see the big stem trunk of the tree extending down into what we call the root wad. And we can see with this root wad how it's changed the depth profile of the river around this root wad, and that's called scour. So we're getting water velocity and current moving into the root wad. It's changing how the water is flowing around it and it's scouring out. It's making a deeper point in the river. That depth, that change in depth, plus the wood structure itself creates a really desirable environment for young fish. It's largely that that root wad down there just has a lot of nooks and crannies that the, the young fish can use to get out of stronger current velocities. They're not real strong swimmers when they're only a couple inches long, so it gives them a break from the high velocity of the main river. Um, but it also gives them a really great place to hide from predators. A lot of the bigger fish actually physically can't get into some of the areas within uh, these large wood and root wad structures. And the, the third really large component of why these wood structures are important uh, is the food base that they provide. There's a lot of algae growing in there. Uh, algae attracts insects and the insects uh, prove to be one of the, the primary components of these young fish's diets. Habitat complexity is the really the, the variety of different habitat types that are in the river, from pools to riffles. Uh, de depth is is a, an aspect of habit, habitat complexity. So we want our rivers to have a variety of depths and velocities of current velocities that are out there. So really, what habitat complexity it gives our fish choices, choices that they can make based on the life stage that they're at, are they a juvenile fish or an adult fish. It gives them choices when the river is in flood. So for a young fish, a flooding river can be very fast and deep and challenging environment for them. 
uh, but a complex river has options during those times that give, that provide these fish with opportunities to find habitat that's lower velocity, that has abundant cover so they can get away from predators and, and hopefully find some food and grow. The, the Mettau River has undergone a lot of change over the last about 100 years and really to, to simplify that change is the river itself has been simplified. Alright, we're back, warming up. It's been made less complicated and that means that some of the banks uh, no longer have the ability to grow riparian vegetation. Um, the, river, the river in a lot of locations does not possess the ability like it once does to meander. So it's been cut off, it can't access side channels and floodplains. So the habitat restoration is designed to uh, really restore the function of the river in that in, in, in doing that we're trying to restore the processes in the river itself that drive that complexity. So it's not necessarily us trying to make the river complex per se, but giving the river a jump start so that it has the ability to function in a way that creates habitat. And, and fish respond to change. Things are all, the rivers are dynamic environments. They're always changing based on flood flows every year. And really that's, that's part of it, is, is allowing the river to do the work and us giving it the opportunity to do that. Ready for action. <laughs> All right, we're on the banks of the Methow River upstream of Wolf Creek. We're on a, a side channel. And this is a, a bank that a few years ago was sloughing off in the river and having a hard time uh, maintaining its integrity. So there was a, a potential restoration uh, project that came to fruition. And uh, what we did here was try to, two goals, try to uh, secure the bank from further erosion and at the same time increase the habitat complexity of this side channel by providing large wood. As we look upstream we can see a series of wood structures that were placed out into the river uh, and that's helping to secure the bank. It's really encouraging to see the these results and having fish using structures that we're putting in the river. Uh, but we still uh, need to determine how this is increasing their survival because that's really what counts for these fish is this is like their nursery uh, habitat and we need to get them off to a good start so we're producing strong fish that have the ability to get to the ocean and, and return. It's a long journey. They have to go across nine dams in each direction so it's a uh, a long and perilous journey. We stuck our heads in some of these log jams and pretty much without fail saw these just emerged spring chinook salmon. So that was probably uh, one of the highlights today in terms of connecting what habitat complexity means and how it plays out in the river.